Hey, real quick, hope you can hear me over the noise. If you can't, I'm sorry, but it is what it is. We had the big storm last weekend. We're still hustling hard. Today I'm going to talk to you about something that can be very, very dangerous for you, whether you're a tree guy or a stump grinder. One of my tree companies uh, called me because they almost got hurt. Not this one, but a different company, a small little company. And uh, they just didn't realize the power of uprooted trees. So I'm ahead of my son. He's coming down the hill. Turn this around. All right, this is an uproot. It's not even that big of a one. You don't attack a uproot from this side. You always come from the sides first because these trees with the roots being bent, the roots are bent on this side down. It's spring loaded sometimes. If you cut a tree, sometimes they'll spring load and pop up. And if you're right over here on the other side, it'll close up on you like a clamshell. It could really hurt you, okay? We'll get back to the subject later. Hopefully you guys can hear me through the headset. If you can, I'll, I'll have to dub over it. We're doing a 360 grind all the way around. Okay, the stump's already moving. We got a big skid steer here. We're cutting all the root system all the way around it. All right, now he's gonna come and cut this last root that's holding it into this wall so they can pull it. And then if we have to, we'll have to come through this corner some more. And there's a leg down here holding, but maybe with the skid steer will pop. So we're trying to do easy work. Kids steer could pick it up and put it in the dump trailer. All right, we had third uproot for the day. I mean, I've done a ton of jobs today, but this is a third uproot. This uproot can be handled with a small machine, an SG40, a 252, no problem. You can come in like I started here on the side. You're not going to attack this side yet, all right? You, you'll go right here, leave this part alone. You'll come here on this side here. You'll grind this. And then you're going to come on this side here and attack it from here and it will fall in its place. I'll take you back when we're halfway through it, okay? Before we finish grinding this stump, and I'm sorry for the wind, hang with me, okay? Why did this tree fail? This is a hackberry tree. It failed on the west side. The storm came in from the west side. And why did it fail? First, it wasn't healthy in the first place. You see how the inside, and this tree had grown into like three different branches of coming up. All right, so another reason it failed on this side, you see this wood here? This is all decay. Decay, look, I can, I can take my hand in here and, and rip it out, it's dry. It, had, it was dead on this side, so there was no root system holding on this side. Look where, look, there's nothing ripped out. It just snapped. The root system's still underneath here, but it's all dead. Only live part was that side and that side. How do you know that was the live part? We go in here. Here's the root system. That's still alive. Okay? And then we go to this side of the tree. This side of the tree. This, this section and this section still alive. This side, you see how it had grown into like three or four sections. It split out of the middle because it's starting to rot down the center. 
all the root systems dead on this side and that side. Cause the tree to fail and go that way, okay? And who knows what could have damaged it through time, pouring sidewalks or whatever. This is a urban tree. This is what its sister would have looked like. This is a hackberry, okay? This, this tree is prone to failure too. Look up here, you see that already rotting system up there? I guarantee you, through the years, sidewalk failures, crushing sidewalk failures. I guarantee you, and they also came in here and put a new water main in here at some time. They dug in here, broke through this system. This tree is just begging to die in the next future years. All right, so I know there's a lot of tree huggers out there. You know what? I love trees too, but sometimes when you have a home and they're dangerous, don't keep a dangerous tree around your house. Get rid of it. You know, some of the cheapest times to have guys come out and do tree work is around Christmas time or right after because they're begging for work. Anyway, God bless you. I'm going to package this video together. I'll show you what the end result looks like of this or halfway through it, okay? Eight minutes into the grind. Took out this part of the tree because this was the most rotted part. Went through. We just went through this part of the tree, and then we had the elevated part over here. All this in eight minutes, all right? Now, if you got a smaller machine, it's going to take you longer, right? But it was hollow underneath here. you got to remember that when uproot. You're grinding through a root system, and it's shaking, and it's dropping the dirt back in the hole, and you're just grinding smaller root systems. So what I typically do is go all the way around the tree, and then I got what's left. But there's something special about this tree you need to know. I mentioned it in a short, the, the tree company came by here just now. This tree was originally laying across that way, okay? And it was a tall tree. I uh, like one of these. When they were making their cut on the log, they still had eight to 10 feet of log sitting out here, all right? They made the cut, the tree went and stood up and nearly flung the guy like a catapult that was cutting it with a chainsaw. So. A lot of guys don't know that this part was still the live part and it's like having a piece of bamboo that you bend over or fishing pole would be better to tell you. You bend over, you let it go and it flings up. take the weight off of here so you got to be careful if you're gonna be out here now if this was a real big stump I told you in the other part of this video that some of these real tall stumps are real tall if you grind it from this way don't do it from the sides it can close on you like a clam and a root can come down smack the guy in the head or just trap your machine I mean these, these are a little tricky they're easy if you know what you're doing it can be a death trap if you don't. All right, that's just, you know, an old guy giving you some advice. All right, so let's see what happens if I could do this within 15 minutes. It's actually cleaner than than I got it when I got here okay that's what I always tell you to leave the job cleaner 
even though I'm not paid to haul anything, I blew it and I put a light rake on it and it's all going to sink because there's voids down there but customers don't have it. This is from, remember I sub for tree companies so it's their responsibility to do the cleanup and all. Quick, it's heat index is like a hundred and something. Um, the reason why my son's not with me on this job and I did film one handed to show you something. But uh, it's kind of hard to film and grind and film with one hand. I don't, I don't put up tripods or anything as I'm here to make some money, come in and out, all right? Hopefully you learn some from this. But in this entire month of July that's here, it, last part of June and July, I'll be filming a ton of uproots, technical, hard ones, whatever, because there's hundreds. So you're going to learn a lot if you want to learn. And I've been teaching my son, he wasn't familiar with uproots, so I've been teaching him all the safety, same safety issues I'm trying to teach you, I've been teaching to him, okay? This job took me 20 minutes, like I said, because I'm by myself. We worked hard, we quit today at 4 o'clock, I had a contractor call me and say, hey, you promise, you promise, you promise, you know. I don't grind after, I try not to grind after three when it gets too hot, it's harder on me and it's harder on the machine, but luckily uh, I knew what I was kind of coming to on this one, so I'm a whore, I'm sorry. Anyway, I'll put this all together and I'll be up tomorrow morning. God bless you. If you got any questions, any comments, as long as they're constructive, they're there. I, uh, you ask me, I'll share with you anything I know, uh, you know, uh, I've been doing it a long time. But uh, if you're a troll, I delete you. Another thing, real quick before I end this, yesterday or the day before, yesterday I put up a video showing I was at a very high, high end, and I put a short up of the storm damage. Some banana head, there's so, there's so many banana heads out there, makes a comment. Oh, am I sure that that's storm damage? Because everything's cut so nice and uniform. I was showing you the damage after it's been cut out of the streets in our city to pick them up and the city's departments cut it out of the streets they have to cut it in four foot long sections so it goes into the tub grinders the city has all right so that's why everything looks uniform and stacked on the side because the city did it all right and uh, I guess some people believe there's conspiracies everywhere like this is a fake event that happened in Tulsa it ain't a fake event because I'm gonna have so many videos and I'll make shorts learning shorts for you so you don't bore you okay see you guys